today's unboxing um, is new books from Candlewood Press. These books are all on sale starting April 7th, and they are distributed by Penguin Random House. Um, so it's a pretty big box. So let's get to it. Okay, the first one. So April, with uh, National Poetry Month, um, hopefully we will see some poetry books. And it looks like the first one is a book about Shakespeare. So this is The Tempest, um, retold by Georgina Illinois and illustrated by Jane Ray. And honestly, I find the children's book or like early chapter book versions of Shakespeare to be very helpful for my kids when they're in high school and they're reading the Shakespeare play in, um, you know, the original four original words. Um, Shakespeare can be kind of confusing. So I've used, um, yeah, I've used picture books. Actually, I haven't seen that many picture books uh, per play, but I've used um, kind of early chapter books when my kids were doing Hamlet, and um, and I um, and I found it to be very helpful because once they understand the basic story, it helps them find the nuance in the actual Shakespeare words. So this is a really beautifully illustrated version of Tempest and um, looks like a great way to give kids an introduction to Shakespeare. The next book is In the Woods and it's by David Elliott and illustrated by Robert Dunlavey um, and it looks like it's about a raccoon so I don't know if it's um, non narrative nonfiction or if it's um, you know, just a, a, a fictional story. Um, and so this is about animals that live in the dark and have to be stealthy. Um, uh, maybe that's when they hunt or just when they get hunted. So this is a beautiful end paper. So it looks like it might be, oh great, it is also poetry. So that works really well for um, April. So it looks like it's kind of like free verse. Um, so a great combination, nonfiction, poetry, um, nature, and just learning about uh, nocturnal animals. Great, that one looks really beautiful. The next one is Madame Bado Beta by Sophie Dahl, illustrated by Lauren O'Hara. And so I'm kind of drawn into this sort of socialite looking woman with the turtle on a pillow and octop an octopi legs coming out. It reminds me a little bit of um, Eloise. Like I'm getting an Eloise vibe. Oh, and it is a hotel. Um, these, this is Mabel, and it's the Mermaid Hotel, um, with a mysterious uh, new guest. Um, so yeah, it has a definite Eloise vibe, but um, in this case, Mabel, who is also a guest, is more of a adventurer who. Uh, mysteries and this new guest oh and it's also quite a bit of text so it almost feels like it's a picture book but it's really like a chapter book and there's something about um, this new person I don't know if she's a mermaid there's some kind of something mysterious about her so that's interesting this is my Walker books it is a it's as it's a very it's an advanced picture book, but it's pretty advanced. It's almost a chapter book. I don't know. Well, all right, the next one is Bugs Everywhere, and it is by Brita Teckentrup. Uh, looks like it's it has a very okay. I'm gonna try to capture it. It has a very shiny cover, so like all the um, gold is actually metallic, and so it glints. And it's very shiny and it's like I think that that alone I, there's there's that kind of gold leaf effect 
on all the bugs. So like little details. So I think that in itself already captures, you know, attention. And then also the cover, which you can't tell, is textured. So where it's um, kind of gold leaf, it's smooth and shiny. But then the other parts, the green, is almost like a fabric texture. Um, and the bugs are, are slightly raised, the insects. So I, I really like that texture for a cover. It just makes it like a really tactile experience. Just like It just feels luxurious. Um, and beautiful end papers. And so this is a nonfiction, um, beautifully illustrated, just with a lot of facts. And what I really love um, about the Candlewick nonfiction is that they, they're really good with the graphic design um, and the color scheme. So it's not overwhelming and it's not too busy. So they, they get a lot of information in, but it's really beautifully done and it makes it easier to read. Yeah, I, I, so that's what I find about the Candlewick books. It's just a lot of, um, I don't know, whoever the graphic designer is, is excellent. And just a lot of attention to detail and sort of a color scheme that's more soothing. And that way you can fit in all the text chunks. And it just, it just feels like a very um, smooth experience going from block to block instead of a frenetic one. Okay, a few more books here. Um, what I Like Most by Mary Murphy, illustrated by Zhu Chang Lian. Um, and so it's just sort of like maybe a, a book about gratitude and um, noticing things, observation. But maybe the overall message is, um, yeah, just um, the small things in life. And so this little girl... Um, it's just noticing what's going on and it looks like it's a mother-daughter moment. Maybe it's mother-daughter outing or mother-daughter time. But yeah, it's, um, it has a diverse character where the diversity is not the point of the story. It just happens to be, which I also really like. Um, and really beautiful illustrations. Poppies are one of my flowers. Um, yeah, done in very delicate, vibrant watercolor. So, I think a message of uh, gratitude is always welcome. Don't Worry Little Crab by Chris Houghton. That looks already, looks a little bit like there's humor built in, and he definitely has a lot of funny picture books. Um, and that's an interesting end paper, almost like graphic art. And so here we have... Two crabs, a big one and a little one, living in a tiny tide pool. Oh, and they're trying to make it to the ocean. Um, and so, it's scary. It sounds like the, the path to the ocean is scary, and then the ocean itself is huge and scary. And so they have to, the little crab especially has to um, find his courage to uh, go to this glorious new place. Which reminds me of my dog, because he's a little bit scared of... I mean, he's a golden retriever, so... He's supposed to be in water, but he's, he's cautious. He's cautious at the ocean, especially. Let's see. Okay. The very last book is called Bones. Oh, what an arresting cover. It's, I really, it's dramatic. It's really beautiful. So this is an inside look at the Animal Kingdom by Jules Howard, illustrated by Chevelle Fryer. And, you know, what I really like about... Uh, bones is that skeletal bones is that if you're learning how to draw um, and I'm trying to learn how to draw right now that for animals and for humans understanding the structure inside from the bones is definitely helpful in rendering the animal correctly and this is I just think the way they illustrated this with dark on white because the bones are white it just really makes it pop and it's really it's really fun to see the the nuances of the bones it's like, like the way they did it it's not scary it's just more interesting but it's it's like every page the focal point is the skeleton um, and that is just a, like very well done in terms of illustration and color scheme 
Um, and there's also just a lot of other facts. So I would say a, no a kid who likes nonfiction would love this. Um, and especially if you have any budding artists. Because um, my son um, was drawing a lot of manga and he wasn't getting some of the muscles in the shoulder correctly. So I got him an anatomy book. And then he just kind of just flipped through it and goes, oh, okay, I get it. I see how the, you know, the shoulder muscle is connected to the whatever muscle. And then all of a sudden his art improved. So this, this, I would, this looks like it's just for nonfiction um, kids who like animal books, but I would try it for um, anyone who likes to draw. It just, it's sort of like a, a gift because otherwise it's just hard to get access to these skeletons. Okay, so again, all these books are out um, on April 7th. Um, they are mostly titles from Candlebook Press, but I noticed a Walker one as well. And so that must also be an imprint of, I don't know, as well, either Penguin or Candlebook. So thanks so much for watching.